Um, okay, so um, in not so long, we are going to, amazingly enough, we are going to have Pesach. I know that seems like a, uh, a an eternity and three quarantines away, but uh, <laughs> but whatever. Um, but uh, but that is happening in a few weeks, and on the second day of Pesach, we will start which mitzvah? Uh, counting. The counting of the Omer. Very good. Thank you. This was not a trick question. You knew what you were preparing. Um, good. So I figure this is these sugyot of the, the Omer um, are the, the topic of the sixth parak, as we've noted. So I want to start with it. But the the by far the strangest thing of it. I really do like how you can get your distance outside here. With it. I love this. It is nice. Um, so, so if you look, open up to Perak Chav Gimel and Vayikra, Pasuk Tet. You got it, Noah? Noah? Yeah. Got it? Perak Chav Gimel. I know there's like a long distance, but whatever. Perak Chav Gimel, Pasuk Tet. What? Should I move a little bit closer? My voice is loud. It's okay. Anyways, so the Pesukim says as follows: Vaydaber Adonai Moshe Lemor, and God tells Moshe, "Daber Bnei Yisrael Amarta Lehem Ki Tavo El Haaretz Asher Nino Tain Lachem Uktar Teme Ketsira Vavaytem Et Omer Reishit Ketsir Chem El Akohen." So once you get there, it's all there will be this korban called the korban haomer. Veinif Et Omer Lefnei Adonai Lerzon Chem. So when does it happen? Right, when do you bring this karban? So mimacharat hashabbat. Vasitem biyom anivchem et haomer keves tamim ben shnato leola ladonai uminchato shnei esronim solet bilulav hashemen ishe ladonai reach nichalach v'nisko yain revit ahin. On that same day, you bring other karban out. You bring an animal, and the karban omer itself is a mincha, is a flower offering. Mixed with oil, like everything else. And one of the prohibitions that comes with it is that until you bring the omer, and we'll talk about this later, eventually, in the perek. Um, I hope. I really do hope. Hello, Gavi, we just started. Uh, I was going to say, it's early. Oh, we just started, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, until you bring the Karbana Omer, you're not allowed to eat any new grain. And we'll see in the Gemara there's a machloket, what happens when you don't have the Karban. So what day does it happen? On the 16th, on the 17th. But this is the prohibition we know as, as I've mentioned before, the prohibition of Chadash. Right? Chadash. You ever? Yes, very good. So, if you ever go to a restaurant or a bakery in America, it'll sometimes it'll say Yashon, Kemach Yashon, right? Y O S H O N, Yashon, right? Yashon. Now, what does that mean? So, something we'll hopefully get to, and again, everything is up in the air these days, but hopefully we'll get to eventually. The halacha is as follows. If you know in Eretz Yisrael that the grain that you have took root after the Karban HaOmer or, or the 16th of Nisan, let's say, so it is forbidden until the next year. In Chutz La to eat. To eat. I mean, also... Well, we'll see about that. But for the moment, let's focus on eating. There, there are multiple prohibitions, bo- both relating to harvesting and to eating. We'll get to them. But for the moment, let's just focus on eating. So what's the halacha? You're not allowed to eat it. What about in Chutz Laaretz? So in Chutz Laaretz, as we'll see, there's a machloket. Some people say that it doesn't apply at all in Chutz Laaretz. That's a minority view. Others say it does in theory. But if, there, if there's a doubt, so then you can be make ill. Right, you can be leaning in a doubt. It's a bit complicated. We're going to have to come back to it. But this is the halacha. Okay? Now, on that same day, what other mitzvah takes place? The, I just said the Omer. Which Omer? Svirat HaOmer. Right? The counting. The counting of the Omer. Usvartem lachem imacharana shabbat. 
Miyoma v'yachem et omer hatnufa sheva shabatot mimot yena. From the day that you bring the karbana omer, and as I mentioned, based on this pasuk, what do we need to ask? The machlokin we shown him, which is whether well, really machlokin gemara, whether it's counting the omer nowadays is biblical or not, because there is no karbana omer. Meaning, does the counting of the omer? depend on the bringing of the korban. So you count seven weeks. So here is what I want to figure out. The Gemara devotes a tremendous amount of space to the following question. What does Mimacharat HaShabbat mean? So, Noah, before we look at the complicated Gemara, Rashi gives you a one-line summary. In the mind of Chazal, what is Mimacharat HaShabbat? What day do we bring the Karban HaOmer? What day do we carry Svir HaOmer? What day is that? R- read me Rashi, Noah. On Pasuk Yud Aleph, Mimacharat Yom Tov Harishon Shel Pesach. It means, it doesn't mean Shabbat, what we call in Halakha Shabbat Breshit. Right? Shabbat normally means what we refer to as Shabbat Breshit. What's Shabbat Breshit? The seventh day of the week. Seventh day of the week, Saturday. Shabbat. What we know is Shabbat. Rather, it means the first day of Yom Tov. And what's Rashi quotes one proof. What's Rashi's one proof? She'im ata omer Shabbat breshit i ata yodea ezehu. If I asked you, if I asked you, but Rashi picks up on one methodological problem. What tipped off Chazal that Shabbat here did not mean Saturday? Because if it is, then you wouldn't know which. Correct. One. Because what Shabbat? Mimacharat ha Shabbat, the Shabbat. Which Shabbat? Right, which Shabbat? What are you talking about? What's the context of Shabbat? And therefore, Chazal said it must not mean Shabbat. It must be a day which is similar to Shabbat, namely Yom Tov. And then, what's the Yom Tov we're talking about? Well, we were just talking about Pesach. So, what it means is, after the first day of Shabbat, first day of Pesach, that's when we start it, meaning the 16th of Nisan. What's the problem? Right? What's the problem? Why are we calling it Shabbat? Good, right? The simple problem that Chazal have to deal with is why then does it call it Shabbat? Say me Macharada Yom And you want to answer up Rashi's question? Answer up Rashi's question. Tell me. Give me another possibility. Rashi answer? says, How do I know what Shabbat? So you give me an answer. It's- you're going in chronological order. Good, so what could it mean? And then it's the first Shabbat after Pesach. Good, right? It could just mean the first Shabbat after Pesach. Right, this first Sunday after Pesach. Mimacharat, ha-Shabbat, which Shabbat? The one after Pesach. You know how, like, everybody knows, right? If I told you, Shabbat, Pesach ends on Wednesday, okay? And I said, and the next question I asked you was, Oh, and when does Zman start again? And I said, after Shabbos. Would any of you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 100%. Shabbos ends on Wednesday. Pesach ends on Wednesday. When I say, you say, the next question is, oh, and when does Pesach break end? And I say, after Shabbos, you would know it meant the the day after the Shabbos, after Pesach. Right? That's what it would mean. So, there is an answer to the question, theoretically. Mimacharat Shabbat. How do I know? So, here's what I want to do. First, I want to go through the Gemara. Because the Gemara has... Well, we can do this two ways. We can either... You, you actually, you tell me how you want to do it. We can either go through the Gemara and start with its proofs and try to understand what the Gemara is really getting at. How does the Gemara know that Shabbat means Pesach? Or, we can go through the possibilities that are rejected by Chazal. Right, meaning Chazal reject one, but there really were many different possibilities that were offered over the years by non-rabbinic groups from the Baitusim in the time of the Gemara to 
Okay. Right, from the Baitusim and then the Gemara to the Karaites later. So which do you want to do first? Do you want to do Chazal first? Or do you want to see what the other possibilities were that they were rejecting? Which one do you want to do first? Masha Balachem. I could do either first. Uh-huh. Chazal are consistent. Chazal think, right, the rabbinic position as we know is that the Omer starts and we bring the Karban Omer on the, the day after the first day of Pesach. So we can either go through the Gemara and try to understand how the Gemara proved this, <coughs> or we can start by seeing the positions that were not accepted by the, by the rabbinic tradition, who in fact embraced other interpretations and understand how we get to ours by contrast. So which do you want to do first? Because right now we can see the interpretations tomorrow up in the Gemara. And so now we have one and one. One, one I don't care. One is... Uh, yeah, whatever you like. Whatever you okay, fine. Let's, let's hold off in the Gemara and we get to the, we'll get to it, okay? Because the Gemara is going to have eight different proofs or something like that. I think it's eight. Um, should we wait for you while you're bringing that down? What? Okay. Okay. So Chazal themselves, right, tell you that what day was it? Right, how did they read it? Mimacharat Shabbat. Right. So the, the Gemara is in constant conflict. Who are their Who are their interlocutors? Who is the Gemara polemicizing against constantly? Uh, the Not the Stukim, the Baitusim. In this case, the Baitusim. Okay, in this case, it's the Baitusim. But, fine. Meaning, the Baitusim. Okay? The English, bo Bohithian, bo 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 yeah, Bothusians, I think, is how you say it in English. Um, and the Gemara at least assumes, let's look for a moment just at what the Gemara quotes in their names. So if you go to the Gemara and Daf Samachai, So the Gemara says, The Gemara says as follows. Um, mm, so, so I look at the Mishnah, right? The Mishnah said that our whole goal, we do a lot of things. So look at the Mishnah, right? The Mishnah said, I mean, you know, let's at least do the Mishnah. The Mishnah tells you on Samach Hamad Aleph, go to the Mishnah. Start with the Mishnah. The Mishnah says, Ketzad hain osin shluchay bezdin. How did the messengers of, be- of the courts prepare for the Ketzirat HaOmer, for the cutting of the Omer? When did you do the cutting of the Omer? No. Uh, the night before the bringing of the Omer, meaning? Motzah Yantif. Okay? Me'er of Yom they would send Bezdin to Erev Yom Tov. Osin otan krichot v'mechubar l'karka, and they would get it all ready, they'd wrap it up. So that it would be ready to be cut. And all the surrounding cities would get together and make a huge deal about the cutting of the Omer. Once it gets dark, what would they do? Omer lahen ba shemesh. They would say, as the sun set. And what would they say? Omer. Hain. Yes. And then they would do it a second time. Ba Shemesh. As the sun set. Omer. Hain. They said, yes. Magel Zu. Should we use this scythe? Omer. Hain. They would say, yes. Here, let's do this back and forth, okay? Yosef. I'm going to ask the question. Each time, just say Hain. Okay? Magel Zu. Hain. Right? This scythe? Yes. Kupazu. Hain. Hain. 
This box? Yeah. Gavi, Kupa Zoo? Hain. Yes. Bishabbat. When it was Shabbat, Omer Land, Shabbat Zoo? This Shabbos, Omer? Hain. Shabbat Zoo, Omer Hain. Ektor? Should I cut? The Hain Omer Lo? Ktor. No. <laughs> this time it's cut. Ktor. Cut. How you doing? Ektor. Should I cut? The Hain Omer Lo? Ktor. I'll catch you up. Don't worry. Shalosh Pamim Al Kol Dar Vadar Vadar Var. Each of these, we didn't just do two times, we did three times. The Hain Omer Lo Hain. 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 And they would do yes, yes, yes. Kol Kach Lama. Sigwar says, what the heck? Right? Why? Mipnei? Habaytusim shayu omrim and ksira omer b'motzai yantif to te- to be hotzi mi liban from the baytusin who said that this is the wrong date and if you look at Rashi Rashi tells you sh omrim and ksira omer motzai yom davel motzai shabbat because the baytusin thought it happened on Shabbat the day after Shabbat meaning Sunday l'fichach hakotrin magbiin kolan. So just to prove it, everyone would be yelling and screaming and doing it publicly. So everyone everywhere would hear. All the Baitusin would hear, so they'd know that they were wrong. But they still do that if the if uh, first day of Yontif was Shabbos. Oh, we'll get to that. So Daniel, so what? So let's catch you up here, right? So we we have two mitzvot that happen. Mimacharat Shabbat. One is the cutting of the carbon homer. And the bringing of the Karban Omer, you cut it at night and you bring it during the day. And the second is Svirat HaOmer, both starting, same day, 16th of Nisan. The Pasuk calls it Mimacharat HaShabbat, the day after Shabbat. And Chazal, right, the rabbinic tradition assumes Chad Mashmai, that that means not the day after what we call Shabbat normally, meaning not on Sunday, but on the day after the first day of Yantif, which is Shabbos-like. So what we need to do is try to understand how we got here. Now the first thing to do before we understand how we got here is to recognize that even though Chazal are convinced of this, not everyone is. And so much so are people not convinced that in order to make sure that the rabbinic tradition is very publicized, so what did we do? As we just did, we did this whole play. Right? They'd bring all the cities in, they'd scream at the top of their lungs, and every single stage they would, they would have a whole production, right? Should I cut? Cut! With this knife, with, the, with this scythe, with this scythe! With this basket, with this basket! Three times each! Yes, yes! Screaming at the top of their lungs to prove to the whole world that we believe that the right time to bring the Omer, to count the Omer is Mimacharat HaPesa on the 16th day of Nisan and not on Shabbat. But that only tells you not the Karaites, but the, but the Baitusim. We'll see that the Karaites eventually so, okay, good. So what's the difference? This is important. The Baitusim are a non-rabbinic sect in the rabbinic period. Meaning, we, our tradition, the, the tradition of the Mishnah and the Gemara... Okay, back up. This is important, okay? This Gemara is not so much Lamdus, but this is very important for like Emuna and Bitachot and nature of Chazal and all that stuff. And it's a whole Amr in the Gemara, so we do need to spend time on it. So here, okay... In the time of the Beit HaMikdash, Nagid, okay, there are many, many, many Jewish sects. I think we've mentioned this. What sect eventually morphs into the rabbinic, what we know as the rabbinic track? They refer to as the Prushim, or in English, the Pharisees. The Pharisees. What other groups exist? So there are... The main interlocutors of Chazal are two rabbinic groups who don't believe in the rabbinic traditions. Those are the Tzdukim and the Baitusim, the Sadducees and the Boethian, whatever, Baitusim, Boethians, I don't know. How do you pronounce it? Baitusim. Okay, there are others. There are others. So, for example, there are the early Christians. Right, the early Christians existed this time. And Chazal are polemicizing against them. They sometimes called Minim, Stam Min. Sometimes they're called Talmidei Yeshu in some of the, uh, in the non-censored texts, right? The students of Jesus. 
There are others. Who else are there? There's the Essenes. There's whatever sect existed at Qumran. Right, we mentioned this. Right, the crazy things going on in Qumran. The sons of light, the sons of darkness. All those stuff. Now, trivia question for you. In general, what was the approach of many of these groups to halakha as compared to the rabbis or the prushim? They're, like more stringent. they're more stringent, very good. Right, they're more stringent. And that's why when sometimes you hear sort of modern people post-reform comparing the reform, Juda- reform Judaism to a sect which broke off it's not exactly accurate when they compare it to these ancient groups because these ancient groups tended to be more machmer. They tended to be much more stringent than the, than the rabbis. Who are the Tzdukim? No, sorry, not the Tzdukim. Who are the Karaim? Who are the Karaites? They are a medieval group. They are a medieval group. Now, sometimes you'll find that people will confuse them. Because the Karaites, fundamentally, mostly, what is their opposition to rabbinic tradition? Authority. Authority, period. The notion that any person has the right to interpret text for other people, even though they do have their authorities. In the Christian world, what is the phrase that became part of the Protestant tradition that is essentially Karite in that sense? Sola, sola Scriptura. Because in the Catholic world, who has the right to interpret Scripture? Uh, the, pope. the Pope. Which we call... His Holiness. Thank you. And what is that principle called? A papal infallibility. Right, that what the Pope says is right, by definition, he's infallible. Right, he gets to define scripture. But one of the central theses of the Protestant Reformation was sola scriptura. Was that you have to approach, what sola scriptura mean? I know it's Latin, but it's not so complicated. Sola is the same as the English word sol, soli, which means only scriptura, the script, the text. So the Karaites... The Karaim are a medieval group. But this is not the same group as Chazal. These are medieval. Who basically follow Sola Scriptura. Not exactly, but okay, let's, for the moment, let's say mostly. The early groups that Chazal are talking about not done necessarily. They may believe in authority, just not the rabbinic authority. And remember, it's important to remember that some of the early sectarian groups, do they think that the rabbis... Some of them think that the rabbis have the wrong traditions. Some of them think that the rabbis have the right traditions, but you shouldn't follow them because they are evil. Who thought that? The early Christians. A lot of the early Christian texts say, listen to the Pharisees because they have the traditions. They're just hypocrites. Right? So a lot of the early Christians, Dafka, did believe in the rabbinic tradition, they just didn't like the rabbis. Which is why the, the, those people were harder and were more integrated into the community sometimes. So how did they pass you on top of what, Who? Uh, what is it? Went solely on the Torah. So they mostly, their own interpretation. Though eventually they do have some notion of authority. It's a bit complicated. And again, the only of these groups that really exists nowadays are the Karaites. Karaites do exist, as do the Shomronim. Right, the Samaritans also exist. Right, there's a small group of both of these. Right, the Samaritans still bring their carbon Pesach every year. You can go on Har Grizim. On Har Grizim? Har Grizim. I believe it's Har Grizim. That they still bring it every year. But not on the date that we do because they don't trust our calendar. It's not in our Pesach. I forget exactly how it works, what day they do it on. Um, and there is a group of Karaites. I told you, I have a cousin who's married to a Karaite. Um, that was how I was yeah, like, oh, Israel. they really do exist. What? Is this in Israel? In Israel, yeah. Yeah, I have a cousin who's married to a Karaite. I mean, she's Chiloni from a like traditional Sephardi family, and he's Chiloni from a Karaite family. So the difference by the end, I don't know. Like, uh, you know, again, the difference between Chiloni 
rabbinate and chiloni. Karite is not like Lokazanak. It's not like they're both, you know, Haredi rabbinate and Haredi Karite. That would be a, a problem. In the medieval period, though, remember, the rabbis are constantly yelling, don't marry Karites, stay away from Karites, don't marry Karites. What does that tell you people are doing? Marrying, Marrying Karites, thank you. How do we know that it's actually happening? You just, you just told us that. Good, but there's another way. In the Cairo Geniza, what did we find? Ktubot. And what does it say in the Ktuba? Part of the conditions are, we'll follow the Chumrites of the, Chumras of the Karites for Shabbat. And the Chumra of the, Kar- of the Karites for Nida. And we'll keep the rabbinate Chumras of this so that we can all get along. And they wrote it in the Ktuba, into the Ktuba. Like, Mamish, we know this happened. Okay. Still in the Ktuba? What? Like it's in the Ktuba. They're in the, we, we have their Ktuba from the Cairo Geniza. He means nowadays, like in your cousin's case. They, oh, no, 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 no. I'm saying, like, I'm all, I'm all, I'm all. If you go, if you go and you look at the Cairo Geniza and you look at the Ktuba from hundreds of years ago, you'll see it. Nowadays, I, you know, I don't know. There aren't so many. There's, there's only t- several tens of thousands of them. Not, not a... Oh, only. What? Oh, only. Like 30,000 or something. That's not a lot in the whole world. Yeah, that's like... That's one community. That, yeah, that means you could fill up a third of Modian, maybe, the with all the Karaites in the world. That's not a lot. Okay. That's less than Sharon. Come on, man. <laughs> hey, how many people live in Sharon? More than 30,000. Uh, Maybe not. I don't, I don't know that. I don't think so. I don't know. Yeah, I, I honestly don't know. Yeah, you could fit. You could fit them basically in Madison Square Garden. At Park Hotel. You could fit a hundred thousand people. No, Madison Square Garden is not a hundred thousand. Not Pico. No, that's why they moved the the CMI shops to the football stadiums. Madison Square Gardens is more like. 30,000, 50,000 maybe. It's not 100,000. The football stadiums are 100,000. The outdoor ones. Okay, good. But what you see from this Mishnah is that it was a very live tradition, right? This wasn't just like a theoretical possibility. The Chazal are going out of their way, and we'll see throughout the parak that this is not the only thing they do, but they make a whole production to tell people it's not... It is the 16th of Nisan. It's not. The Shav is after Pesach. But that means that, that people really did believe this and Chazal felt a need to respond. So, let's see what they're responding to. So, the particular position of the Baitusim seems to have been what day? Right, what day? So, let's go through the possibilities, not Chazal. Before we get to Chazal, let's talk through some of the possibilities. The Baitusim themselves thought that what day was the Omer? The day after? Shabbos after Pesach. The day after the Shabbos after Pesach. Now, I want to just point something out. Are the Baitusim part of the same community as the Rabbinate Jews? Yes. Yes, prove it to me. Besides the fact that clearly they're going out of their way to be Motzi. But tell me, give me a better proof. How integrated are they? We know this in Yoma because they're doing different things in the Beit HaMikdash. But give me, what, what much better known Mishnah than this Mishnah do you know that tells me that they are part of the community? That they care about the community? They aren't completely separate. He's still connected to the Torah. Come on, tell me. That's much later. That's the Karaites. Come on. The Mishnah in Rosh Hashanah. What does the Mishnah Rosh Hashanah tell you? The Mishnah tells you that originally, how would they know when Pesach, how would they know when Rosh Chodesh was? The witnesses would come to court. And then what would the court do? Declare Rosh Chodesh. And how would they tell everybody it was Rosh Chodesh? The fires on the mountain. The fires on the mountaintops. The, the scene from Lord and the Rings. The lighting of the beacons. You all know the scene. Please tell me you all know the lighting of the beacon scene in Lord of the Rings. Not Lord of the Rings, just know the concept of light in the mountains. No? Okay, so afterwards, look up on YouTube the lighting of the beacons, Lord of the Rings. And if you want to understand what it is, you'll see what it is. And it's very, very quick. Because it goes from mountaintop to mountaintop. Oh, okay, fine, yeah. You know that scene. No, I don't know the scene, but I know the... Mulan did it first. Good, well, good, but you have to see the scene. It's a great scene. It's amazing. <laughs> This is objective, okay? You have to see it. We know this. Lord of the Rings, by the way. I don't know how many times I have to say this. See hey, Lord, Lord of the Rings. Nebby, what makes it objective? 
Because I said so. Right? <laughs> That's Anyways, that's the lighting of the beacons, okay? Answer. So how long did it take to spread messages by lighting the beacons? Not so long, because it goes from mountaintop to mountaintop. Right? Meaning I can see from my house, right? If you go, you can see Pachor you can see Rishalayim. Right? So you can, and Israel's not so big. You could do it in a, in a matter of minutes. An hour, maybe. Right? You light the fire, they see the fire, they buy the next one. What happened? Eventually, we, sli- we switched over to messengers on a horseback. Why? Or camelback or whatever. Because Donkey the, back. the Baitusim would try to mess it up. Baitusim would try to mess it up. Why would they try to mess it up? To say that Do you remember they, why? They didn't believe in the Sanhedrin. So, why would they want to mess up what the Sanhedrin are doing? Just out of spite? Because they have a different system. What did they want to bring about? What was their end goal? For Pesach to fall out on Shabbos. Oh. Because this way, everyone would agree on the day. How, why do they because they thought it was the first, it was the day after the Sunday after the first day of Pesach. Now, by the way, there's another option. We're going to see. But they thought it was the Sunday after Yom Tif. It's like election day. Right? It's the Third Tuesday, it's what it's like, or Thanksgiving, right? It's what it is like the fourth Thursday after the fourth Wednesday, or something, or the fourth Monday, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Like it's not just the fourth Thursday because if it starts on a, if, if the month starts on a Thursday, then it's not the fourth Thursday. It's the fourth Thursday after the fourth Monday, or something like that. Right? So that's how they read it. It's the first. It's the day after the Shabbos after the first day of Pesach, which means the day after Shabbos Cholamoy Pesach. So they wanted to do was that make Pesach fall out on Shabbos and then what? Everyone agrees that what's the day to bring the Omer? Sunday. Because that's the day after the Shabbos of Pesach. So they were trying to mess up the calendar so that eventually they'd get it to... But why do they care? They care because they're still part of the community. If they follow their own, so then they have a different calendar. But if they can manipulate the system, then they'll end up that all Jews are following what they think is the right interpretation. And that's why we couldn't, because it's very easy to mess up the lighting of the beacons, which is also why it's important to see that scene, because that's the whole point, right? Because the, if you remember that scene, the steward of Gondor, Denethor, doesn't want the more detail you add, the more confusing it is. The steward of Gondor has been... His mind has been polluted by Sauron. He doesn't want to seek help because he's already given up. So therefore, Gandalf has to convince the hobbits to light the beacons to set in motion the right the unity of the, of the battles of men against the forces of Gondor. But he has to... He did it without permission of... The steward of Gondor. That's the point. That's the point of that whole scene. Right? That's literally the point of the whole scene. He has What's to sneak up. Okay? It really doesn't matter. I mean, it does matter. But What's the from doing not as much as this matters. What's the start of from sabotaging the horseback also? Because you would have messengers who were known. You'd go to the Beit Din and you knew the messengers. Right? You would know. This wasn't random people. You would set up people that were trusted. You could do that with the beacon lighter. No, they can't. How are you supposed to know? Anyone can go up and just light a fire. Why? Yeah, that's the well, there's the issue. So that's the point, and that's what they would do. So would he just stay up there the whole time with a gun over the beacon? Like, I'm, you know. Well, someone's going to stay up there the whole time, because otherwise, how are you going to know when the last guy... Because you know it's not true in the 15th of the of the month, right? It's you. There's only a very short range in which it could be. There's two days when Rosh Chodesh could be, so they go up then. So those, two, those range of two days, they would go up. Okay, well, they didn't work. People were messing it up. Yeah, but they do it on the mountain next to it, and you didn't realize. You're going to guard every mountain that might be confused. Okay. So, the Gemara says... That's why we moved to messengers. So you see, they're still part of the community. And that's why they're yelling and screaming and convincing them. But we, again, so before we get to to how the rabbis know what they know, what were the other possibilities? So good. Mimacharad Shabbat. Again, we know Chazal's conclusion. Chazal's conclusion is it's going to be the day after the first day of Pesach. 
But what other logical possibilities exist? Okay, let's try to understand what Chazal are rejecting. So first, the Baitusim. The Baitusim's interpretation is Mimacharara Shabbat. They mean they think the word Shabbat is Shabbat Breshid, what we call what we call Shabbat. And which Shabbat do they think it is? The one after Pesach. No. The one after the first day of Pesach. Meaning Cholamoid. Or alternatively, if the first day is Shabbos, then the first, after the first day. Okay? That's what the Baitusim thing. Now what are their what drives their interpretive tradition? Right? What drives it? Their conviction that what? Why do they think Mimachar Shabbat always means Sunday? That's easy, because they think Shabbat means Shabbat. Why do they think that the Shabbat in question is the one after the first day of Pesach? Because context is, we're talking about Pesach. That's it. What, would, what other possibility might you have had? The day after the day... The day after the Shabbos, uh, after... Very good. Bacharon. Right? You could have maintained both interpretations, meaning Shabbat means Shabbat, and therefore Mimacharan Shabbat means Sunday. And uh, in context, we know that the Shabbat in question is a Shabbat that has to do with Pesach, but not necessarily the Shabbat of or after the first day of Pesach. It could have been the Shabbat of or after... Uh, Yom Tabacharon. Yeah, the last day of Pesach. Right? Yom Tabacharon. Because remember, Yom Tov Acharon, unlike Sukkot, Pesach has a Yom Tov Acharon. Sukkot doesn't. Right? Sukkot, ha- how many days of biblical Yom Tov within Israel Malacha are there on, Yom- on Sukkot? How many? One. One. Shemini Atzeret is a separate, a separate holiday, which happens to be adjacent to, to Sukkot, as opposed to Pesach, where... The first and the seventh day of Pesach itself are Yom Tov. And therefore, another potential interpretation would have been Mimacharat Shabbat. Shabbat means Shabbat, therefore Mimacharat Shabbat means Sunday. Context means Pesach, but not like the Baitusim. Rather, what it means is. The Shabbat after, like the, the example I gave from vacation before. Right, if I say Shab- Pesach ends on Wednesday, and I ask you, well, when does Ben Azmanim end? And you say, after Shabbos. Everyone knows it means after the Shabbos, after Pesach. Meaning the Sunday after Pesach. So let's go through the... Um, But what, so what, what do you think drove the, the particular interpretation of the Baitusim that it's the Sunday of Pesach rather than the Sunday after Pesach? What drives them? What do you think? So let's go through possibilities, okay? There, there were some Karaites who thought that the Omer is clearly connected to Pesach, and therefore they thought that the Omer has to be brought on Pesach. On Pesach right? Meaning they take it a step farther. We know that Mimachar on Shabbat has something to do with Pesach. They said it has, to be on it has to be on Pesach. That's what drives that conviction. However, did the Shomronim believe this? No. No, the Shomronim didn't. They thought that this is a very nuanced thing. The Karaites, some of the Karaites thought that the Shabbat had to be, the, sorry, the bringing of the Omer had to be on Pesach, and therefore you always brought it on the Shabbat, the Sunday after the Shabbat of Pesach. But what would happen if the seventh day were Shabbat? Which means that the first day was what day? Sunday, what day would the Karaites, some of the Karaites say to bring it? Sunday. The first Sunday, the 15th. Because they thought it had to be on Pesach. What did the Baitusim think? If Pesach started on Sunday, then what day would they bring it? On the 15th or the 22nd? The 22nd. The 22nd, why? 
Because they thought it was the day after the Shabbat, and they don't think the Omer has to be brought on Pesach. What do they think? The Omer has to be brought after the Shabbat of Pesach. So, so some of the ta- correct. So the Karaites thought that if the first day is Sunday, you bring it on the fifteenth, meaning the first Sunday of the Sunday of Pesach. The Baitusim think it's the Sunday after the Shabbat of Pesach, and therefore the bringing of the Omer itself doesn't have to be on on Sunday. I'm uh, sorry, have to be on Pesach. It's just the Shabbat that you build off of has to be on Pesach. The day after the sun, the Shabbat, it's, they think it's the Sunday of Pesach, which could theoretically be the first day. Because for them, part of their exegetical drive was that the Omer has to be brought on Pesach. What day of Pesach? Sunday. The B- Baitusim said, no, it's brought after the Shabbat of Pesach, which means that most of the time it's brought on Pesach, with one exception. Okay, very simple. The, the Karaites think that the Omer must always be brought on Pesach. What day? Sunday. Sunday. So six times out of seven, that means that the Shabbat and Sunday in question are Pesach itself. If Yom Tov starts on Shabbat, so then you bring it on day two, which is the second day of Pesach and Sunday. If the, if the holiday starts on Friday, so you bring it on the third day of Pesach. On Thursday, you bring in the fourth day of Pesach. Wednesday, you bring in on the, the Sunday. There's, but what happens if Pesach starts on Sunday? So there is no... So then, is the next Sunday Pesach? No. No, because how many days of Pesach are there in the Torah? Seven. Seven. Which means that if Pesach starts on Sunday, the next Sunday is already after Pesach. So the Karites say you bring it, on the first day, because it's Mimachar Shabbat means the Sunday of Pesach, whenever that is. The Baitusim say no, it's the... So six times out of seven they'll agree. The only time they disagree is if Pesach starts on Sunday, the Karaites would bring it on the first day of Pesach, and the Baitusim would bring it on Isruchag. Because they think that it's the Shabbat that has to be Pesach, not the actual bringing of the Omer. Although, isn't, we're talking about the Talmud Dathli, where this is all happening in the Chutz Naritz anyway, isn't it? Yeah, no, we're talking about the Mishnah, Mishnah Zaretz Oh, this is the Mishnah, fine. Right. Okay, now, let's quickly go through, I'm just taking this from Al-Hatorah, because Al-Hatorah is an excellent 40-page piece on this, okay? <laughs> you can look it up if you want, but it's a great website. So, Again, what, what drives their exegetical approach? The first is that HaShabbat, almost always in the Torah, what does Shabbat mean? Shabbat. Shabbat. Meaning, it almost, this would be the, one of the only times where Shabbat doesn't mean Shabbat if it meant Yom Tov, which is one of the main reasons why they think that the issue here is Shabbat. Shabbat. Um, now, the, you might say, well, wait a second, like Rashi says, but how do you know that it's the Shabbat and Pesach? What's their answer? Why do they say that it's either the, Shabbat, the Sunday of Pesach or the Sunday after Pesach? Because it's connected to Because Pesach. the context, just like Chazal, clearly it follows Pesukim about Pesach. The Karaites say that there is another benefit. Okay? And this is something I want you to think about. What date is Shavuot in the Torah? According to the Torah, what day of the what is the calendrical date of Shavuot? The fiftieth day after, or after the beginning of Sfirat Haomer. Correct. The fiftieth day after you begin Sfirat Haomer. So the Karaites and the maybe by Tusim also said, but wait a second. According to Chazal, Shavuot has a very set date. It's either the 5th, 6th, or 7th of... <laughs> very set. 5th, 6th, or 7th. But they said... But wait a second. If Shavuot is simply... When... 50 days after whenever... Sunday happens to fall out, that's why... There's no date, because... It has a range of 7. Now, of course, you could always respond for, Chaz- for Chazal. 
We also agree there's no date. There are three possibilities. Very good. But what's the big disadvantage to their approach? Let's talk about disadvantages before we actually see it in Chazal. What are the disadvantages of saying that Mimachara Shabbat means Sunday? Logically, come on. Logically, what's the problem with saying it's Sunday? Why Sunday? Yeah, exactly. That was not, it's not complicated, right? Which is, I don't understand. What? Why Sunday? I, you want to tell me it starts after the first day of Pesach, and it's a holiday that's connected to Pesach. In the parsha that's talking about Pesach. So I get it. But why magically Sunday? Why Sunday? So, why might it be Sunday? So as we'll see, there's a little bit of this in the Gemara. But in the in Megillah Ta'anit, we have a Karai tell the rabbis, I know why Sunday. You know what it is? And we'll see it in the Gemara as well. A version of this, which is, he had a good svara. What is it? Has anyone ever been here for Shavuot, in Israel for Shavuot? Yeah. No. What's the biggest problem of Shavuot in Israel? Keeping two days. <laughs> no. Punk What's the biggest problem of Shavuot? In Israel, Shavuot is over like this. You stay up all night or whatever you do, you go to sleep, you, and the day is over and you move on. And then you just... <laughs> no, you don't. For one day people, I am. No. Eretz Israel is one day. The fact that you are a weird hybrid is not my problem. Okay? <laughs> I, my point is that fundamentally... Fundamentally, how many days of Shavuot are there in Eretz Israel? One. One. What's the problem? It's over like that. So the, that so the carrot, so the Baitusi says, I'll give you a good Svara White Sunday. Because the one time of year that I miss two day Yantis is Shavuot. Because the first day of Shavuot, I'm exhausted. The second day of Shavuot feels like a normal Yantis. So you know what he said to him? It's very simple. God wanted you to have a two day rest. Sure, you're right. Shavuot's too short. So why is it always on Sunday? So it's right after. So Shabbat. that you always have Shabbat. Does anyone ever notice that the most popular, the, the, the best Shavuot, in it, always the best learning of Shavuot is always mo, when it's Mote Shabbos. When when Shavuot is Sunday, everyone takes a nice long Shabbos nap. And then shows up for shul and learns all night because they're uh, they're awake. So the Baitusi said that's why it's always Sunday. So that it'll always come after Shabbos. They start always start counting on Sunday. And that's why it's Sunday. That's his logic. So Salmon ben Yerucham the Karite gave a different suggestion, and he said it, the reason it was on Sunday is to make sure it would never be on Shabbat. Because he thought that bringing the Karbanot on Shabbat was Chilul Shabbat. So Mimacharat Shabbat means make sure to bring it not on Shabbat. Um, now, there's another thing you have to know. Which, the Pasuk in Yehoshua tells us as follows. In Perak Hey of Yoshua, you have the following. On the day after Pesach, they brought the they ate the produce of uh, parched corn, etc., which said and in Yoshua, when talking about seemingly the Omer, used the phrase Mimacharada Pesach. What's the problem? What day is Pesach in Chomesh? The 15th of Nisan. Wrong. This is what you have to know. According to Chomesh, what day of, of, is Pesach? Chag Pesach in Chomesh is? The 14th day. Thank you. The 14th day. When you bring, when you shech the carbon Pesach. What is the 15th of, Fe- of Nisan called? Chag HaMatzot. Right? Chag HaMatzot. Chag HaPesach refers to the 14th. So, the Karaites said, the benefit of us saying that it's always the first Sunday of Pesach, even if the first Sunday of Pesach is Ted Vav Nisan, is that we interpret the Pasuk in Yehoshua saying what? 
after that the... on that year Pesach started on a Sunday so when did they bring the Omer? that Sunday that Sunday which was Mimacharada Pesach the day after the 14th also known as the uh, first day of Chag HaMatzot, or what we call the first day of Pesach but Tanakh would call the day after Chag Pesach or the first day of Chag HaMatzot. So they said that the advantage of saying that it's the first Sunday is that we can in- interpret the Pasuk in Yoshua. So how did the Shomronim deal with this problem? The Samaritans, how do they deal with this? Because they hold like the Baitusim that it's the day after Pesach. How do they interpret this? They don't. Yoshua is not part of the Samaritan Tanakh. Very easy. <laughs> it's, it's very easy. They don't have to worry about it. It's like asking me how I'm Yashiv in the New Testament. I'm not. I don't know how to hold of it. Okay. Um, so that is good. The Qumran, the, in Qumran, and I won't make you try to read Qumran, but in the Qumran scrolls, so remember, those are the, those are the Dead Sea Scrolls, right? Meaning found at Qumran. So they have an interpretation that it's the day following the first Shab is after Chag What I, the example I gave from vacation. Right, so now, so far, we have two possibilities. One is that it's the first, it's the Sunday in Pesach. That's the Karaites. The, by, by two Sim say it's what? The Sunday after the Shabbat of Pesach. The only nafkamina between them is if, Shabbos start, if Pesach starts on? Sunday. Sunday. Where according to the Karaites, you bring it on day one. And according to the Baitusim, you bring it on? Isruchak. Isruchak. Or Yom Devsheni Shalgaliot, as, as it were, okay? According to the Qumran, they say, Mimacharada Shabbat is after the sun, Shabbos, after the end of Pesach. So again, according to them, how do they understand the word Shabbat? As. Shabbat. This wasn't our. Shabbat. How do they know that it's related to Pesach? Because it's in context. Because it's in context of Pesach. Why do they think it should be the day after Pesach? So this I don't expect you to know, but it's very simple. The reason is as follows. How many days are in the Karite, uh, sorry, are in the Dead Sea Scroll Sex calendar? I do not expect you to know this at all. How many days do they have in their calendar? Daniel, take a guess. 287. 364. What's important about the number 364? It's one off from the solar calendar. Yeah, but what else is important about it? What's it divisible by? Oh, by seven. Seven, which means they don't have a rotating calendar. Everything always falls on the exact same day, day of the week. Uh, right? The only reason that our calendar moves is because it's not divisible by seven. But the Qumran calendar was divisible by seven. I think that was the same day. Exactly. So according to them, it's very simple. There is no different possibilities. It was always the exact same time. So Shavuot always fell on what day? Shabbat. Always fell on Sunday. Which Sunday? Sunday, the 15th of Sivan. That's how it falls out. Okay? I did not expect you to know that. Um, they will just have to understand the Pasuk of Yeshua. It's not talking about the... Omer is talking about something else, and they don't really explain why Sunday we'll have to talk about it for other reasons. That's possibility three that we're rejecting. Possibility four, and this is from Mashwi al Kabari Hakarai. This is another Karite. Remember, the Karites have different interpretations, and also from the Savoyim sect of, of the uh, of the Karites. Sorry, of the of the Samaritans. They have another possibility. And what is their possibility? One second. Here we go. So they think that Mimacharat Shabbat. they have another interpretation. They says it's very simple. You're getting all wrapped up on this because you think that the Omer has to be brought when... Something to do with Pesach. They said we have a, a very easy solution. What is it? Does it ever say in the Psukim that the Omer is brought on Pesach? 
No. No. When does it say the Omer is brought? No. Yes. But what else does it say? It gives you one other clue. And one more clue. Me'achel chermesh bakama. What does that mean? From the beginning of the... When you start harvesting. So they said, you missed it. You know when it is? The first Sunday of what? The harvest season. Stop. It's very simple. You know why it's on an arbitrary day of the week? Because it's, it's not connected to Pesach and it's not connected to any date. This is an agricultural holiday and celebration. So once the agricult- once you start harvesting on the first Sunday after the harvest starts, so you bring a special carbon and seven weeks later you celebrate a holiday which is celebrating agriculture. So it has nothing to do with Pesach. And they said, that's why. This is not in the same parasha of Pesach. It's near Pesach, but it's not the same time. And they said, Foc- don't focus on the Mirach Harad Shabbat. Remember the Pasuk of Tispar Lecham Echel Chermesh Bakama. Focus on the emphasis of when you start harvesting. Now, according to them, why does it make sense to start on a Sunday? Because why not? This has nothing to do with Pesach. The same way we say that every legal holiday is on a Monday, and except for Thanksgiving, which is on a Thursday, we do it to make a long weekend. Okay, so here we do it on a Sunday. I don't know, at the beginning of the week. I don't know. Well, is this they say Chag Pesach or the... No, it's when you, whenever you harvest. Okay, okay. When the harvest season starts, the Sunday after that. Okay. Right? It's very simple. So it's nothing to do with Pesach. Correct. And therefore they said, don't wreck, don't get too... Why do we pick a day of the week? Because we pick a day of the week of an of a rotating agricultural possibility. And therefore, is there a date for Pesach? Uh, for sorry, for the Omer to start? No. No, and now, according to them, why is there no date for Shavuot? Not because there's a three day day possibility, and not because there's a seven day possibility, but because it's it could be any time. Whenever you start harvesting, make a holiday seven but, weeks but, after that Sunday. But, but. Yeah, different people can start harvesting on different days. Yep, meachos. Um, and therefore, how will they read the puzzle in Yoshua? Maybe they'll say it. Maybe in that year, it happened to be that when did they start harvesting? Before Pesach. So then it overlapped, but you didn't have to. Now they don't explain why Sunday, but it could be some of the things we talked about before. Okay, so those are all the positions that. Um, oh no, let's get one more before we do Chazal, and tomorrow we'll focus on Chazal, okay? After we've seen all those, there is one more. And this is found in the Pshit... No, I take it back, there are two more. Okay, let's do one more, and we'll do Chazal tomorrow. This is found in the Pshita, and it's the tradition of some Ethiopian Jews. And they say it is... Well, they agree with Chazal that Mimacharat HaShabbat means Yom Tov. Except, they disagree with Chazal's interpretation that it's the first day of Yom Tov. They think it's the, last day. the day after Pesach is over. You know what? Let's hold this for tomorrow because now we're starting to see people who... Be- what we've seen today are basically all the different variations of people who said that Shabbat means Sunday. And then we saw three possibilities. The Sunday of Pesach, the Sunday after the Shabbat of Pesach, or the first Sunday of the agriculture of the new agriculture. What we're going to see tomorrow is that Chazal go in the de- in the direction that Shabbat means Pesach, means Yom Tov. The majority view in Chazal is that it's the day after the first day of Pesach, meaning the sixteenth. But as we'll we'll talk about a little bit more tomorrow, is the tradition of some Ethiopian Jews. And the pshita that it's the day after the last day of Yantif, which maintains Chazal's interpretation that Shabbat means Yom Tov, um, but digresses from Chazal on which Yom Tov we're, we're talking about. Um, so tomorrow, read the Gemara, because now that we've seen the possibilities Chazal are rejecting, right, due from the Mishnah on Samachayim and Aleph, through the Gemara on Samachayim and Beis, where the Gemara goes through its eight proofs, to explain the rabbinic position, which is, no, 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 no. It means the first day of Yantif, okay? 
So that's what we'll do tomorrow. Okay? Shkoyach.